I just came across this Droke battery capacity manager on Amazon, so I picked one up and I am absolutely in love with this thing. I'm gonna tell you all about it this time on Ham Radio Tube. For the longest time, I've been using these meters to monitor what my battery is doing, and they do a really good job, but this one does it better. These guys only count up. So if I'm pulling a load off the battery, that's great. There's a 12 amp hour battery in this box. So once this hits 12 amp hours, I know that it's dead, you know? But if I charge it, it counts up as well. There's a solar charge controller in here. So if I have a load on it and I'm charging, this just keeps counting up. So you never really know what the state of charge of the battery is. Well, this guy, you can see we're pulling a load of 0.28 amps right now. But when I charge this, this will go back up to whatever I set the battery capacity for. And it's awesome. So let me, let me walk you through this guy. I think you're really gonna like it. Now the meter comes with everything you see here. Obviously we have the meter. It's got this cool little clear case that you can slide over here to protect it. So you don't accidentally bump in it and it actually locks into place. And you can also put it the other way if you choose to do so. So that's really nice. Uh, it comes with a couple wire connectors there for attaching to the shunt, I suppose, and a wrench for doing the shunt things. This is the power lead for the positive side that's gonna hook up to the meter and give it power. You also get two different length control cables. You only need to use one or the other. You just have a longer one and a shorter one. So. I use the shorter one, and then here is the shunt. I went with the 100 amp shunt, but they do make larger ones, and the battery actually connects here, and the control cable connects here. This thing is stupid easy to set up, so basically all you do is you take this ribbon wire, plug it into the back of the meter, and then you plug it into your shunt. Then you take this red wire, and you're gonna plug it into one of these green terminals here that say bat positive. You plug it into either one. A little Phillips head action there. Open that up. Stick it in. Tighten her down. And then you're just gonna connect this to the battery or your fuse block or wherever you're gonna get the positive from. And then on the shunt, you can see we have load and battery. So I'm gonna connect my load, which in my case I have going to a fuse block. And then we apply power to the positive and negative. And note, we're gonna connect the battery to the battery post on the shunt. And we have power. So this battery capacity manager has a lot of features that are very useful. We've got a battery percentage here. We've got the amp hours of the battery. We actually set that depending on the size of your battery. We've got a timer here that's gonna tell us based off of the load that we're drawing, how much time we have left. Now I found that at low current draws, this isn't accurate at all, but once you have a little bit of current going through it, that actually will recalculate and give you a fairly accurate amount of time that you have left based on the current draw and the capacity of your battery. And just to show you, here's a bigger load. We're pulling 1.22 amps and you can see we're a lot more accurate on that time. So pulling 1.22 amps with a three amp hour battery, we've got two and two hours, 22 minutes left before this battery is dead. Then we have the current draw, you've got your voltage, and then you have the watts that you're pulling. This disc up here, I have no clue what it's for. I don't think anyone in the world knows what it's for, how to reset it, what it does. The most I can find is I think it's a cycle counter. So if I unplug the power from it and plug it back in, now we're at 23, so I have no idea. And then you have this kind of lightning bolt slash bow tie looking thing. When we're charging, that's gonna go green and I'll show you that in a bit. Then we have an up arrow, an OK button, which is also our menu button, and a down arrow. So let's show you how to configure this. 
Now, a lot of people on YouTube are saying this doesn't come with a manual. I did get a manual with mine. It gives you a wiring diagram and some operating instructions. I will tell you, these are very poorly written. Uh, I, I had to play around with this for quite a while to figure it out, but I'm gonna show you how to use it and make your life easier. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you get this set up is calibrate it. So we'll see that I'm not pulling any current out of this. There's no load going. But if for some reason this is showing, and you might wanna do this anyway, we're gonna long press this OK button and that's what's gonna bring us into the menu. And the menu number one is set current clear. So we're gonna press OK and notice how press up key just turned blue. We're gonna long press that, the up arrow, and hold down OK to save. So now we've just calibrated it, we've basically zeroed everything out. Next, we're gonna long press the OK button again to get back into the menu. And we're gonna hit the up button to go, we're gonna set the battery value. So this is the battery capacity. In this example, we're just gonna say that I'm using a three amp hour battery. But to set that, we're gonna hit the OK button. Notice these are blue now. And now we're gonna hit the down arrow and that's what's gonna cycle. You can see the red arrow going between the zeros there. And I'm gonna say this is a three amp hour battery, so we're gonna hit the up arrow and go one, two, three, hit okay, and now we're back to set battery value as blue. We can long press okay and save it, or we can continue on to further steps and save everything once we're done. So now we're gonna go back into the menu we're gonna to go to menu three. This is the battery percentage value. So we're gonna assume that I have a three amp hour battery connected that is fully charged. If you know the state of charge of your battery, you can set that here. So let's say this battery is only at 50% and I just let's just say I know that. We can hit the OK button to select the setting, hit the down arrow, and I'm gonna say put the, the red cursor in the middle and I'm gonna say that this battery is 50%. Now you can see we show one and a half amp hours there. In this case, I'm just gonna say it's 100%. We can hit okay again and move on to the next menu, menu four, which is set the LED value. So this is just the brightness of the back screen. And I think it only goes up to 10. So we can set that to 10, hit okay. We can go up to menu five, which is set rest screen. So this is how long the screen will be on before it dims. Now we can set this, there's no on off button. So the screen's basically gonna stay on until you tell it to turn off with this menu, or there's a way to have it stay on with a predetermined current level going through it. So I'm just gonna leave mine on 10 seconds. If you wanna lower it or make it higher, you can certainly do that. And you're just gonna go up, say I want it on for 60 seconds, we can hit okay. Then we can go to menu six, which is set the STI value. Now this is the value that is gonna tell the screen when to dim. So I've got mine set for 0.1 amp. So if this meter is pulling anything more than 0.1 amp, that setting five is not going to be in play because we're pulling more than 1.1 amp. So I'm gonna actually change this back down to 10 seconds and I'm gonna set my STI value because I use this for kind of low current draws like charging cell phones and things. So I want this to be on unless it's pulling anything less than 0.1 amps, it will dim but we can set that for whatever value you, we want. Maybe we want it at a half amp. Maybe we want it at, you know, five amps, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can set it however you want, or we can just clear everything out by hitting the down button. And I'm just gonna change that back to 0.1. And I'll, I'll show you what that means in a minute. Menu seven is set the back color. I haven't messed with this, but we can set presumably the background color, let's see what that does. Doesn't look like it did anything. Yeah, I can't tell any difference, but there's that function. Menu eight, we have the language, Chinese or English. Nine, we have an LED breath, which I honestly don't know what is for. Let's save that and find out. The instructions say it's LVP 
low voltage alarm. When voltage is lower than LVP value, the capacity will auto clear. Well, that doesn't say anything about breath. Some of these things I don't care about. Number 10 is the ADS value, which is the communication address, which actually shows menu 11 on the instructions. So again, those instructions are very poorly written. Menu 11 is set PAI value, which from what I can muster per the instructions, the value of current clear after no load current clear, the shunt might make current higher than zero, which can set PAI. When current is lower than the set value, the current value will zero. So what I read from that is, say if we're pulling anything less than whatever, let's just say an amp, the current will show zero. Uh, that's what I'm reading into it. So I just leave mine at 0 0.01, the lowest it'll go. And then we have menu 12, which is set OVP value. So this is basically when you're charging, if you have a charger connected to the meter and the battery, once the voltage gets over a, a set number of uh, set voltage, it will automatically basically set everything to 100%. So I'm using lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've set mine to 14.4 just to try it out. I, I don't know if it actually works or not, but that's what I've done. I really charge them up to 14.6, so we'll see. So now I want to test this OVP value, see if it actually works. The instructions say the voltage value of max capacity. When battery voltage is higher than OVP, the capacity will auto fill up. So I've just set this to 14.1. We'll go ahead and save that. And I'm going to plug in a charger and see if it gets over 14.1, if it will just automatically make it full. And there we are. Look at that. It's just filling it up. So that's actually a really useful feature. I like that. So the reason being, there different lithium iron phosphate chargers, especially charge controllers, will charge at different voltages. So for example, like a Genesun charge controller, I believe charges to 14.2 or 14.4, I can't remember. So technically lithium iron phosphate is charged fully at 14.6, but if I had a Genesun charger, or I think the charger that I'm using right now charges to 14.4, if we didn't set this to say 14.2 or 14.4, we might never show it's full. So that's a quick way to just say, okay, I've got a 14.4 volt charger. Once it hits that, just show that it's at full capacity, even though we're technically not at that 14.6 volts, which is actually full capacity. So that's actually pretty darn cool. And it works, I'm kind of amazed. And then uh, menu 13 is set low voltage protection. So I've set mine to 10.7. So if the voltage goes lower than that, this will sound an alarm and let me know, hey, your voltage is pretty darn low. And then we can just long press the OK button to save all of our settings and get back to the main screen. Another thing you can do, if you just know your battery's full, maybe you charged it without this in line, if we just long press this up button, that's gonna reset it back to our full settings there. And same way, maybe we used our battery outside of this meter, we know it's dead, we can long press this bottom button, the down button, and that will set it to zero, indicating that we have a dead battery. And there you are, just like that. And if we start charging, we can see we're getting five amps in, and this will start charging back up to that three amp hour that we set previously. I don't know how useful those functions are, but they're there nonetheless. Now I completely understand that everything we just talked about was probably pretty confusing, it took me a while to kind of figure this out, but hopefully that gives you some bit of guideline. The important thing is to set the capacity of the battery that you're using. In our example, we're assuming we're using a three amp hour battery. And because this does not have an on off switch, that STI value that we set, which is menu six, I believe, this is what's going to either keep the meter screen on or it will shut off at that predetermined time. And we set this for 10 seconds. So right now I'm drawing a load. The meter's gonna stay on because I set it for anything higher than 0.1 amp, the meter's gonna stay on. But once I turn my load off, it's gonna dim 
and will be off after 10 seconds. See how it just dimmed and now it's off. So I can turn my load back on, we'll push any one of the buttons to turn it on and until the load draws below that predetermined current, it's going to stay on, which I really like. And as you can see, this thing draws like no current at all when it's on. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my meter is zeroed out and it's still not zero, but you can see maybe it's some small little draw that this meter pulls. So I'm not too worried about this wearing out my battery, especially when the screen is off. Now the greatest thing about this meter, because it's bi-directional, we're gonna always know what's going on with our battery. So for example, right now we're pulling 1.22 amps out of this. No charger, no nothing. So if I'm out in the field using a battery, I know I'm pulling 1.22 amps. I've got 2.82 amp hours left and approximately two hours and 20 minutes of usage out of this battery. But if I plug in a solar panel, notice this is negative. I'm just gonna plug in a charger in this case. This turns to positive. I just plugged in a six amp charger. So even with the load that we have on the battery right now, we're still putting current into the battery. We have a positive current flow. And we can see here, we've got two minutes. So theoretically, if this was actually a three amp hour battery, this would be charged in two minutes and we'll start seeing this right here the capacity you just saw is counting back up it's going back up to the full state of charge so we always know the capacity of our battery whether we're charging or discharging or both that is freaking awesome so I hope that helps you out. If you want to pick up one of these meters, I will leave a link to my Amazon store where you can pick one of these up. My name is Mike, K8MRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube.